Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here in Chicago at the High Performance Audio Show. <laughs> Expona, and we're here with Editor-in-Chief of Stereophile Magazine, John Atkinson. John, you've seen a, a lot of equipment in your day, and mm -hmm. you've probably seen a lot here while you're at the show. Your response to this show, anything groundbreaking, exciting? Well, the show itself is great. I mean, there hasn't been an audio show in, in the Chicago area for 14 years. So to be here, to meet all the Chicago audiophiles, to meet all my readers from Chicagoland is just great. I love it. Um, the show itself has got, I think, 75 rooms, some great sounding systems um, at all price levels. There's st stupid expensive stuff, which is, you know, we all aspire to own. But there's also some really good stuff that, that as affordable prices. Talk about that affordability in and bringing people in. There's a lot of folks that are just getting into it. And of course, everybody these days, uh, headphones come with your telephone mm -hmm. anymore. And uh, a lot of people listen to music yeah. on the low end of things. What, what's happening there? Is it an exciting area for, for uh, high, high performance audio? Well, one of the things that's happened is there's a lot of Chinese sourced audio equipment. The Chinese actually have more veneration for audio and the heritage of, of, of audio than perhaps domestic manufacturers. So you're getting a lot of really good competitively priced equipment coming out of China. Um, a lot of uh, European and American companies have also moved their manufacturing to China, which of course is supposed to be a bad thing. However, the quality of manufacturing in China these days is really good. So you get a high quality product at an affordable price and I mean, there are loudspeakers for $500 a pair, $300 a pair, which are as good as what you would pay $2,000 a year, a $2,000 a pair for 20 years ago. You were saying you heard some $350 a pair or so that you think really really break your ears apart here. Uh, yeah, there's, there's one called the Music Hall Mamba, $350 a pair, uh, American company, but it's manufactured in China, and... It's great. I mean, they're, they're playing, it's a little speaker, but they were playing dub, which, of course, I don't know if, if you know, that you need big bass to play dub, and yet this speaker was managing really well at it. You talk about around the world, and we hear, heard here in the, in the session that uh, it's a little different, uh, where it's some of the shows there, they're bringing entire families, they're, they're pushing strollers, and it seems to be a little limited, more of a limited uh, audience here. How do we break through and get that new demographic, get more women, get more young people involved in this? Well, on the magazine, I'm doing it by using younger writers, um, expanding our music coverage to more contemporary music. There's a lot of really good indie rock happening now. Um, we've launched websites to cover headphone listening, computer audio, um, analog. So we're, we're expanding, I guess, the magazine. You could say we're expanding it sideways to cover those areas of interest. And we're finding that the demographics of the people to those websites are a generation younger than the people who read the traditional magazine. Talk about computer audio and streaming and the ability to control it from your iPhone and yeah. go room to room with it. Um, is that kind of going off in one direction and high-end audio going off in another direction? Or are they coming meeting in the middle somewhere? They're meeting in the middle. I mean... The, the, I, the, I, the iPod from 2003 and iTunes 4.5 was a huge step forward on the part of Apple towards our community because that was the first iPod that would play uncompressed audio that would allow you didn't you were no longer restricted to MP3s which suck. Now you had uncompressed audio, CD quality, real CD quality audio available on the iPod. So 2003, I think, was the first time that the world started to come together. Now you can play great music on an iPad, on your iPhone, on your on your Galaxy phone, whatever, and you can hook it up to your high high end rig, and you can get great sound from a, a source which has become ubiqu ubiquitous. Talk about vinyl. It seems to be making a bit of a resurgence, although it's still very small, maybe 5% of the market. Well, I think, you know, the LP, CD is, is, is completely commoditized. There's no value anymore in a CD other than the bits representing the music on the disc, whereas the LP is actually an object of veneration. It's beautiful. It's big. It has great artwork. It, you can read the liner notes. And... So that's part of what's going on. The second is the sound quality, where if there's something very friendly about the sound of vinyl, in partly because you can't squash the heck out of the music like you can with a CD. Um, the other thing is, 
if there's a ritual to playing an LP, which, and, and ritual is very important, you have to get the LP out of the sleeve, you have to put it on the turntable, you have to clean it, and then you put the stylus in the groove and there's that satisfying plop, which like sets you up to enjoy the music, which is very different to just pressing play on a CD player. Uh, one more question, what's a, give me like the best thing you may have heard here in the, in the past day or so. There's a German company called MBL, which make omnidirectional speakers, and the rare room at this show, the ninth floor, it just, they have done a great job at setting the speakers up in the room so that the speakers work with the room instead of against the room acoustics. Also, the very nature of that speaker does something special to the highs. And listening to Peter Gabriel's um, uh, album from last year, it was just like being at the concert. John, thanks for sharing your passion about all this. Thanks for taking a few moments to talk with us. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.